Hello guys, welcome back to another video on infinite series. So in this video, we are going to talk about these tests to understand whether a given infinite series is convergent or divergent. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you how you can attempt a free quiz on all these topics and you can also get the solutions of that. I'll talk more about it at the end of the video. So right now, keep watching. I'm going to solve a total of 10 problems on all these tests with a brief introduction to each one of them. So let's get started. And before we get started, I want to discuss a very few things that will be required while we are solving the problems. So these are some things to remember. If I have an infinite series of the form 1 by n to the power p, then this is actually called a p-test where if the value of p which is in the power of n, if the value is greater than 1, then we will say that the given infinite series is convergent. If p is less or even equals to 1, then we will say that the series is divergent. So this is something to remember and some very easy applications to this is if the value of p is specifically 2 which is greater than 1, then 1 by n square is convergent. Similarly, 1 by n cube into the power 4 or rather any power where p is greater than 1 is going to be convergent. And let's take another example. If p value is exactly equals to 1, which falls into the second category, then summation 1 by n is going to be divergent. So these two things are going to be widely used when we are going to do comparison test. And one more thing to remember is the geometric series or an infinite GP series, which is of the form A into R to the power n minus 1, where A has to be definitely something positive. We can comment on its convergence and divergence in this manner, that this infinite series is going to be convergent if the modulus value or the absolute value of R, which is nothing but the multiplier in a geometric progression, if that is less than 1, the absolute value is less than 1, it is divergent if r is greater or equals 1, it oscillates finitely if the value of r is exactly equals to 1, that means it's going to be plus minus plus minus in this manner. If r is less than even minus 1, then we say that it oscillates infinitely. Okay, so these are a few things we need to remember before we go into any problem of infinite series. So now let's get started with comparison test. It is saying that summation un, I want to understand the nature of summation un. This is the one that I want to understand. So I, what I will do is I will compare the given infinite series which I want to find out with another infinite series whose nature I already know from beforehand. So let's say summation Vn, I know the nature of this infinite series. That means I know whether it is convergent or divergent. And I'm going to compare this Un infinite series with the Vn. And I'm going to conclude about the nature of Un from this comparison. So what this comparison is saying, we need to take the nth term of both the infinite series. So un by vn, the ratio of the nth terms of both the series, where we already know the nature of vn. And we're going to take the limit. Let's say the limit value is L. If L is a non-zero finite number, okay, and positive, non-zero finite and a positive number, that means it's in between zero and infinity, some value in between that then we can say that summation un and summation vn converge or diverge together. Now, what does that mean? If summation vn is convergent, let's say, let's say for some problem, the L value turns out to be 1. Let's say it is 1. So, that means it is in this range. So, now if vn was convergent, then un will also be convergent. If vn was divergent, then un will also be divergent. That means both of them will have the same nature, okay, provided the limit value is in between this range. Now, there are some uh, extreme condition values. That means specifically now if the L value becomes 0. See, I had restricted that L had to be greater than 0. But specifically, if the L value becomes 0, if at that point summation Vn, that means the series that we are assuming, the nature that we already know if that is convergent and if the comparison test 
is giving me the limit value as 0, then summation un is also going to be convergent. Remember, the vice versa is not true or the reverse is not true. That means if uh, vn is divergent in the first case, then we don't know what is going to happen to un. We don't know. We can't comment on that. It's going to vary. And similarly, I had restricted that L has to be less than infinity. That means it has to be a positive, finite positive number. Now, suppose if L tends to infinity, I shouldn't write equals. I should say if L value tends to infinity, the limit value tends to infinity. Then, if summation Vn is now divergent, then summation Un is going to be divergent. Again, remember the opposite is not going to work. That means if Vn is convergent in the second case, we don't know what's going to happen with Un. It's non-decisive. Okay. So these are the rules of comparison test. Now let's directly start solving a few problems. So this is our problem number one. Now, the very first question is that how will you understand, given a problem, how will you understand which test to apply? I have so many tests in my hand. Right now, preliminary, I am working with uh, comparison test, ratio test, Rabi's test, uh, root Cauchy's root test, Leibniz test. So, obviously, Leibniz test is not coming to the picture because it is applicable for alternating series. I will come to that later. So, presently, I have four tests. I am working with four of them, although there are many more. So, which one should I apply? Given I have or I know just four tests, which one should I apply? Okay. So, first look at the nth term in the summation, right? The nth term in my summation is under root n by n to the power 3 by 2 plus 1. Now, if your numerator and denominator are polynomials of n, okay, that means they do not involve trigonometry, they do not involve exponentials they do not involve logarithms okay they are just simply polynomials then be rest assured you can always do that problem with a comparison test okay and i'll tell you the easiest way to do it okay the easiest way would be just concentrate on the degree of numerator and denominator now since i said both of them are polynomials so i can easily figure out the degree so, just look at the numerator part. The degree is how much? Root over n. That means degree is half. Okay. Look at the denominator part. What is the degree of the denominator? It has n to the power 3 by 2. So, degree is 3 by 2. So, what you do? You just simply take the subtraction of the degrees. Always remember denominator minus numerator. Okay degree denominator minus degree numerator that means 3 by 2 minus half that is going to be simply 1 okay so whatever is the answer that you get do this mentally okay this is something you are supposed to do it mentally not in your copies okay so the degree difference is 1 so the vn that you are supposed to take that is going to be 1 upon n to the power the degree difference that you have got that means this particular value which is nothing but 1. So, just remember this format your Vn is going to be 1 upon n to the power the difference of the degrees that you have got just put it over there that means what I am trying to say is that you need to take Vn as 1 upon n okay. Now, you already know that summation Vn is summation 1 by n and you already know that this is a divergent series right if you have forgotten i'll just remind you that i told you right over here that summation 1 upon n is a divergent series right from the p test so we already know that this is divergent okay so we know the nature of the vn that we have chosen now remember if you choose your vn in this manner comparison test is always going to work for you okay so now let's concentrate on implementing the comparison test so we have to take the ratio of u and v n and the limit okay so my u n is the one given in the question which is root over n by n to the power 3 by 2 plus 1 divided by v n so if i am dividing by 1 by n that means i am basically multiplying with the n okay so the moment you do this you will see 
the degree in numerator and denominator has become same okay this is the reason why we took vn in that manner so that upon division the numerator and denominator will have the same degree so now if you concentrate the numerator n multiplied with root over n that's a degree of 3 by 2 denominator degree 3 by 2 so numerator denominator degree has matched now you can easily find out the limit so what is the degree over here now both numerator and denominator has degree 3 by 2 so how will you deal with the limit you will simply try to take the degree common from numerator and denominator what's the degree the degree is 3 by 2 so forcefully try, try to take n to the power 3 by 2 common so if i take n to the power 3 by 2 common from numerator all i'm left with is 1 if i take n to the power 3 by 2 common from denominator i am left with 1 plus from the term 1 i am taking n to the power 3 by 2 common that means i am going to have n to the power minus 3 by 2 okay so you just cancel out n to the power 3 by 2 now if you take n tending to infinity your numerator remains 1 your denominator this one remains 1 now n tending to infinity if you put it in this term what are you going to get you're going to get a zero because you have n to the power negative so n to the power negative where n tending to infinity that's definitely a zero so your value is one which is definitely positive finite value so that means it lies in between zero to infinity which was our required criteria of comparison test right so comparison test it has given me a l value which is in the required range so what i can comment is that the nature of un is same as the nature of vn now remember the nature of vn was divergent so that means i can say that my that the question that is given this infinite series is also divergent that means both will have the same nature whatever is the nature of vn the same will be the nature of un that is what comparison test is saying since vn was divergent so the given uh, infinite series in the question that is also divergent okay so that's done and dusted so let's do another question so again same concept just the difference with the previous question is that in the previous question the nth term was provided to us okay it's, it was provided you could easily see what is the nth term and over here the nth term is not visible to you from this pattern you have to figure out what is the nth term okay so let's try to figure out if a series goes on like this what would be its nth term let's try to figure that out okay so i'm trying to figure out the nth term observe the numerator let's go term by term okay observe the numerators only see the numerators it's one then it becomes three then it becomes 5. So, we can see it's a series of odd numbers, okay. Starting from 1, then odd numbers. So, we know if I take a series of odd numbers starting from 1, then its nth term is definitely going to be 2n minus 1, right. If I put n value 1, I'm going to get 1. If I put n value 2, that's 3, so I'm going to get the second term. If n is 3, so 3 to the 6 minus 1, that's 5. That's the third term. So I've got the numerator of my nth term. Now let's focus on the denominator. So in the denominator, we can see it has started with 2. Let's say look at the first term. It's 2 into 3 into 4, 3 into 4 into 5, like this we have. So 2, the next one has the first term 3, the next one has the first term 4. So in this manner, it's a series of natural numbers starting from 2. Okay. Usually when we write n, the series starts off with 1. But here the series is starting off with 2. That means the first term I can write as n plus 1, right? Because if I put n value 1, I'm going to get 2, which is the first term. If I put n value 2, I'm going to get the second value, which is 3. So my first term is n plus 1. Now it's just a matter of simple observation that whatever is in the first place, plus 1 is in the second place plus 1 in the second place plus 1 in the second place so n plus 1 with one more plus 1 i would get n plus 2 again plus 1 is the third place right plus 1 is the third place so that's going to be uh, n plus 3 
so we have got our required nth term now it's exactly like the previous one i have done just figure out the degree difference the degree in the numerator is i just have one n so that's a one uh, the denominator has three factors multiplied three linear factors so total degree in the denominator that's going to be three the difference in degree is going to be three minus one that's two so my vn is supposed to be one upon n to the power two right and we already know that summation vn which is going to be 1 by n square that's a convergent series okay so right now only i can tell you that un is going to be convergent because if you select your vn in this manner 100 percent comparison test is going to work for you and you already know that your given series is going to be convergent but let's complete the sum for its sake so now I need to do um, limit n tending to infinity un upon vn. I need to find the ratio and show that the limiting value is a positive finite number. So n tending to infinity un is 2n minus 1 upon n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 3. Okay, let me just find some space for myself so um, multiplied by so i have to divide this by a vn vn is 1 upon n square so divided by 1 upon n square that's going to be simply a n square so now you can see numerator denominator degree is definitely matching both of them have degree 3 right now so that means i need to take n to the power 3 common forcefully right so if i take n to the power 3 n square goes out common and i need to take 1 n common from this factor so that's going to be 2 minus 1 by n from the denominator again i'm going to take a n to the power 3 common so from the first factor if i take a n common it's going to give me 1 plus 1 upon n from the second factor another n common 1 plus 2 by n from the third factor 1 plus 3 by n and the moment we do that we have the n cube getting cancelled now just put the limit so n tending to infinity numerator is going to be 2 my 1 by n n tending to infinity that's going to be 0 so i'm not writing that divided by this these are the terms that is that is going to remain the other terms are definitely going to become 0 because n tending to infinity so denominator i have 1 into 1 into 1 actually 1 plus 0 into 1 plus 0 into 1 plus 0 so that's just 1 so it's 2 and it definitely it's a positive finite number that means comparison test has worked for us so now i can say that the given infinite series has the same nature as that of the vn series that means our given series is convergent that's it okay so it's this simple so let's quickly look at another question I need to test the convergence of this infinite series. Okay. And the problem with this question is that we have something minus something. Okay. There is no denominator. I don't have a denominator. Or that means I have a denominator 1. Okay. Now, as I told you, always remember for your comparison test to work, your denominator degree has to be greater than your numerator degree. Then only you will get a positive difference. Then only your v to the power. 1 upon n to the power that value is going to be your vn right now you don't have a denominator here so what we are going to do is we are going to rationalize and bring in our numerator okay so this is our i can call this my summation un so my un is under root n to the power 4 plus 1 minus under root n to the power 4 minus 1 so i'm going to rationalize this i'm going to multiply this with under root n to the power 4 plus 1 plus under root n to the power 4 minus 1. I am going to multiply this in the numerator and in the denominator. Okay. So I am just simply rationalizing it. Okay. So if I multiply the numerator now, it's going to be a minus b into a plus b. That's a square minus b square. So I have a square minus 
of b square and denominator is just going to remain as it is no problem with that because actually we want the numerator to be there so n to the power 4 gets cancelled so we have 2 upon under root n to the power 4 plus 1 plus i think i just copied this wrong it would be n to the power 4 minus 1 under root n to the power 4 minus 1 okay so now let's try to apply apply our comparison test so this has a degree of 0 because there is no n term present so it's basically it's something like 2 into n to the power 0 that's just 2 so degree is nothing but 0 denominator has a degree of it's in the form of under root n to the power 4 that means n square so it has a degree of 2 right so denominator has a degree of 2 so the difference between them is 2 minus 0 that's 2 so that means your vn is supposed to be 1 upon n square and you already know that summation vn which is summation 1 upon n square that's definitely something which is convergent okay so right now you understand that un has definitely become convergent but let's just do the limit so i'm going to take un in this format okay this was the un term which i was simplifying so i'll just take the last simplified value of un rather than taking the question so now i'm trying to calculate the limit so limit n tending to infinity un by vn that's going to be the un i'm taking this as my un so that's the simplified version n to the power 4 plus 1 plus under root n to the power 4 minus 1 so i've taken my un i need to divide it by vn which is 1 upon n square so that basically means multiplying with the n square right so now you can see degree of numerator denominator has both become 2 so i'll try to take n square common so n square is already common in the numerator i'll try to take n square common from the denominator so it becomes 2 n square upon if i take an n square common i'm going to have under root n n1 plus right and if i take n square common from inside the root over so n to the power 4 is going to come out so it's going to remain as 1 and the 1 is going to become n to the power minus 4 right plus under root 1 minus n to the power minus 4 right so my n square gets cancelled out now if i put n tending to infinity my numerator value is 2 my denominator the n to the power minus 4 that's going to tend to 0 as n tending to infinity n to the power minus 4 again tending to 0 as n tending to infinity so i will simply have under root 1 plus under root 1 so that's a 2 by 2 which is 1 which is a non-zero finite number right non-zero finite positive number so that means the given infinite series has the same nature as that of my summation vn so that means my given infinite series is nothing but convergent right so it's proved and this is how comparison test works so i hope you have got comparison test so now i'll move on to the next one which is ratio test or d alembert's ratio test so let's quickly take a look at the statement it is saying that un has to be positive which means every term in the infinite series has to be a positive term okay and the ratio of n plus 1th term and the nth term in the limiting sense let's say the value comes out as l okay so i'm taking the limit of the n plus 1th term and the nth term and i'm calling it l now if the l value if l value is less than 1 then the series is convergent if l value greater than 1 the series is divergent and specifically if l value is exactly 1 the test fails that means we don't know whether it is convergent or divergent using this particular test so that means there might be some other test which can confirm its nature but ratio test won't be able to confirm it so if l equals 1 
we are unable to make a decision using ratio test we might have to move on to a different test in that case okay so just remember l less than 1 convergent l greater than 1 divergent and this is how we find out l value so let's quickly take a look at a problem so this is a given problem now the first challenge is we don't know how the nth term is so we need to figure out the nth term okay so from here i'm trying to figure out what will be my nth term if this is the pattern how we are writing one thing you can observe every term in the numerator has the same power which is 2 so that means my nth term will also have something which has a power 2 right and what the base numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 just basic natural numbers that means my nth term is going to be simply n so it's going to be a n square in the numerator let's look at the denominator so denominators basically have 2 to the power 1 2 to the power 2 2 to the power 3 2 to the power 4 so every base number in the denominator that's 2 and the power is the natural numbers 1 2 3 4 5 so that means the nth term will have a power of n right so my nth term is n square upon 2 to the power n okay now you will say sir why are we not using comparison test well is the denominator a polynomial of n no it is not it is 2 to the power n so that means it's something like exponential okay it's in the power of 2 n is in the power of 2 so it's not a polynomial anymore so comparison test is not going to work for you right now so you have to go to some other test in this case we are going to deal with ratio test okay so for ratio test the next thing that you need to find out is the n plus 1th term now that's very simple wherever you find n in the nth term just replace it with the n plus 1 that means replace n by n plus 1 that's it so i have n square over here if i replace n by n plus 1 is going to be n plus 1 whole square divided by 2 to the power if i replace n by n plus 1 it's going to be n plus 1 so I've just replace the n with n plus 1 now we are going to find out the limit of the n plus 1th term and the nth term the ratio of them as per the ratio test and if the series has to be convergent then the value of this limit must be less than 1 so let's see whether that happens or not so i have n plus 1 which u n plus 1 which is n plus 1 whole square upon 2 n plus 1 2 to the power n plus 1 divided by u n so that means multiplied by the reciprocal of u n which is 2 to the power n upon n square okay so we're going to try to cancel out the like terms as much as possible and arrange them properly so i'll keep the n plus 1 and the n term one below the other with the complete whole square that means this term and this term and i can see my entire 2 to the power n is going to get cancelled with this power and only one 2 is going to be remaining so i'll have a 1 upon 2 remaining right so now this part what i can do is i can divide by n individually that would give me a 1 plus 1 upon n whole square multiplied with a half so now if i take n tending to infinity i will get 1 plus 1 upon n that's going to become 0 as n tends to infinity whole square into half so that is half and it is less than strictly less than 1 so my l value is strictly less than 1 and by ratio test what i can say is that the given infinite series is going to be convergent right so if n if l value of the limit or the limit value is less than 1 then the given infinite series is convergent okay so this is how we are going to apply the alimbert's ratio test let's to look at another question where we have all the factorials in the denominator and the numerators have powers of 4 so again you have to understand what is going to be the nth term the numerators have powers of 4 with natural numbers in the powers 
so that's going to be a 4 to the power n in the numerator denominator is definitely a n factorial so now we need to figure out what is un plus 1 that's going to be a 4 n plus 1 by n plus 1 factorial just replacing the n with n plus 1 now we're going to try to find out the limit of un plus 1 upon un and that's going to be un plus 1 is 4 to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1 factorial divided by un that means multiplied with the reciprocal of un which is n factorial by 4 to the power n now we're going to cancel out as much as possible 4 to the power n gets cancelled with the power of 4 over there and we can further cancel the factorials i'll just break it up for you so i have n factorial upon n plus 1 factorial that's nothing but n plus 1 multiplied with n factorial right so the n factorial gets cancelled now to give me as n tending to infinity the entire value is going to become 0 right which is definitely less than 1 so if l value is less than 1 again we have the same conclusion that the given infinite series is convergent right so dlms ratio test is pretty easy the moment you figure out your nth term you are almost done with the problem so let's quickly take a look at another question so now this is a little bit complicated arrangement of terms figuring out the nth term is the main deal in this question so let's figure out what will be my nth term okay Achha. so in this question the first thing that you have to observe is that we have a pattern from the second term onwards we don't have any pattern in the first term which is exactly one now remember i am trying to understand whether this entire series is convergent or divergent that means what does convergent mean it means that the entire sum of this infinite terms over here is something finite right now if instead of one if the question had 10000 if this part is convergent if the bracket part is convergent if i add 1000 with it it's still going to remain convergent if i add 10000 with it it's still going to remain convergent that means the entire summation is still going to be finite if the bracket part is finite so here in this question i just had one so if the bracket part is finite then adding one with it will also be finite so let's say i am calling this or i am considering this as a part of my infinite series or i am assuming my infinite series to be of the form 1 plus summation un where n from 1 to infinity so my summation part is this part i am excluding the one because it is not fitting in into the pattern it's not fitting with the pattern of the rest of the terms okay so you can ignore the first term second term third term any finite number of terms you can ignore and you can start considering from that part where you have a pattern formation okay so now i'm going to consider that this is my first term this entire thing is my second term this entire thing is my third term and so on in that scenario i want to find out what is my nth term okay so what we can see is that the first term has a half the second one has product of two things in numerator denominator third one has product of three things in the numerator denominator and all of them are again multiplied with some other number so that means my nth term must definitely have n number of terms in multiplied in numerator denominator multiplied with something else that's the format we can understand okay so it's starting with one the next one has one into three the next one has one into three into five so the next one would have one into three into five into seven and so on this would go on so that means my numerator is all the odd number of terms that means 1 into 3 into 5 into like this it's going on so if i have a series of odd numbers its nth term is going to be 2n minus 1 so this is 
my numerator part 1 into 3 into 5 so on up till 2n minus 1. Let's now focus on the denominator. So whatever I have written in the numerator just plus 1 with each term is going to generate my denominator. So you can follow the arrows just add a plus 1 that is generating your denominator. So if I add plus 1 with all the numerator terms 1 is going to become 2, 3 is going to become 4, 5 is going to become 6 and 2n minus 1 if I add 1 with it is going to become 2n. That's it. Now I have one more term the ending term multiplied with some term at the end. So again this term you can follow. This is nothing but after 3 the next odd number would have been 5. After 1 the next odd number would have been 3. After 5 the next odd number would have been 7. So after 2n minus 1 the next odd number would have been 2n plus 1. So that means I will have 1 upon 2n plus 1. So this is my entire nth term. Okay. Now the moment I have this I am going to find out my n plus 1th term. So that means I will just replace the n with n plus 1 nothing else. So 1 into 3 into 5 into dot 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 it is going to end at if I replace I have 2n minus 1 over there. If I replace n with n plus 1, it is going to become 2 times n plus 1 minus 1. So, I just replaced my n with the n plus 1. So, that would be 2n plus 2 minus 1. That is 2n plus 1. Okay. So, now my series is going to stop at 2n plus 1. Similarly, my denominator is going to be 2 into 4 into 6 and it is going to stop at 2n plus 2. And the last term would be 1 upon 2n plus 3, right? So, I have got my n plus 1th term. Now, let us try to apply the ratio test over here. So, I need to figure out limit un plus 1 upon un n tending to infinity. So, u n plus 1, I have this term which is 1 into 3 into 5 into dot 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 2 n minus 2 n plus 1 divided by 2 into 4 into 6 into dot 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 2 n plus 2 multiplied with a 1 by 2 n plus 3. Now, this divided by u n, so that means multiplied with the reciprocal of u n. Now, I am writing the reciprocal of u n. Uh, that is 2 into 4 into 6 going up till 2n divided by 1 into 3 into 5 going up till 2n minus 1 and in the numerator I am taking the reciprocal so the 2n plus 1 is going to the numerator part okay now I am going to see what are the terms I can cancel out and also let me put a bracket the entire thing is inside the limit. So, what I can see is 1, 3, 5, 1, 3, 5 and it is going to get cancelled up till 2n minus 1. So, 2n minus 1 is just the term before the 2n plus 1. So, that is cancelled. Then 2, 4, 6, 2, 4, 6 up till 2n it is going to get cancelled. So, 2n is the term just before this one. So, up till that much it has got cancelled. So, now these are the remaining terms, right? So, let me... Now, write down all the remaining terms that I have. In the numerator, I have a 2n plus 1. In the denominator, I have 2n plus 2. Then another 2n plus 3. In the numerator, I have another term which is again 2n plus 1. So, I can write it as a whole square, right? Okay. So, now numerator denominator has the same degree, it's 4 and 4, uh, sorry, it's degrees 2 and 2 in numerator and denominator. So, I will try to take n square common and cancel them out. So, I am taking n square common from numerator and I will be left with 2 plus 1 upon n whole square divided by taking one n common from the first factor that would give me 2 plus 2 upon n, another n from the second factor, 
so that's 2 plus 3 upon n and I've taken a n square common okay so the n square is getting cancelled now if I put the limit n tending to infinity I will get 2 plus 0 whole square divided by 2 plus 0 into 2 plus 0 so that's 1 now remember ratio test said if l is equals to 1 we cannot make a conclusion remember i'll just show you the slide this was what i had said that if l value is 1 the test fails so we have got stuck at this place with this problem that we were doing right so now what to do now remember if your ratio test fails the best bet is go for rabi's test Okay, that's the best solution we can have. If your ratio test fails, go to Rabi's test. If again that fails, then there are other tests to do and I'll not go into that right now. So I'm going to go into Rabi's test over here because my test has failed. So let's quickly okay. take a look at Rabi's test, what that is saying. It is saying that my series has to be a series of all positive terms, just like the ones that we have been doing. Now specifically you are supposed to take this kind of a limit. Remember in ratio test it was un plus 1 upon un. Now it has become reciprocal. It's un upon un plus 1. Then there is a minus 1 and multiplied with the n outside. Let's say the value of that limit is l. Now if l is greater than 1 then it is convergent. Remember the rules have just become opposite compared to ratio test because we have just inverted our ratio. So my uh, results have also the inequality signs have also reversed so if l greater than 1 now we will say it is convergent if l less than 1 we will say divergent if again l equals to 1 then even rabi's test is going to fail so let's do one thing in our previous question let's try to apply rabi's test now remember when a sum like this is given to you just by looking at the sum you cannot understand whether to use a ratio test or rabi's test the best thing that you can do is just go on and apply ratio test if it fails don't worry you have already done 70 percent of rabi's test when you are doing ratio test actually because you have found out the this limit un plus one upon un or you have found out this ratio this ratio was nothing but this so you have the ratio un plus one upon un this is the ratio that you already have this you can directly use over here in the rabi's test just don't forget to reverse it or make it reciprocal don't forget to do that because here it is un plus 1 upon un this is the value and here it is un upon un plus 1 just the reciprocal so that means you have already done 70 percent of rabi's test you just need to take this value and put it in a different limit that's it okay so i'm going to take this value take the reciprocal of this value and plug it into the rabi's test okay so i'm going to apply this limit over here so i'll have limit n tending to infinity n times un upon un plus 1 now that is going to be the reciprocal of this which is 2n plus 2 into 2n plus 3 divided by in the numerator I had 2n plus 1 whole square so that's going to be 2n plus 1 whole square then a minus 1 and I need to see now what is the value of this limit whichever criteria it satisfies we can make a conclusion from there okay so let's now quickly try to simplify this limit so I'm going to simplify the portion inside the third bracket I'll do some LCM break up the numerator so that's going to be a 4n square plus um, 4n plus 6n that's a plus 10n plus 6 minus the whole square of the denominator so that's a 4n square minus 4n minus 1 upon 2n plus 1 whole square so i can see my 4n square is getting cancelled and i am left with n into 10n minus 4n so that's a 6n plus 6 minus 1 so that's a 5 by 2n plus 1 whole square so now again i can see that 
my numerator denominator has a degree of 2 so i will try to take n square common so if i take n square common from numerator already i have a n common forceful if i take another n common from the inside part i'll have 6 plus 5 upon n divided by i'm taking a n square common from denominator so that will give me 2 plus 1 upon n whole square the n square gets cancelled if i put the limit i'll have 6 plus 0 upon 2 plus 0 whole square so that's a 6 upon 4 which is 3 by 2 the value being 1.5 that's that means my given series which is 1 plus un that is definitely right so if you have done d'alembert's ratio test and if had if it has failed you're just going to use rabi's test and remember you can just take the result from your ratio test and plug it into the rabi's test okay so you don't have to do much more extra effort in that all right so moving on to our next test which is cauchy's root test okay so now how will you under identify a cauchy's root test the best way to identify is that always remember your nth term is going to have some function of n with a power of n whole to the power n so remember you have not seen anything like this in comparison test or in uh, ratio test okay, in ratio test you had seen something to the power n but it was mostly constant to the power n but right now we are going to have some function of n whole to the power n when you have a whole power n of the entire function be hundred percent sure you have to use Cauchy's root test. Okay, so let's quickly see what the test is saying. It's saying that it has to be the series has to be a series of positive terms. That's quite like any other test. And if particularly this limit, if that is L, that means U n to the power one upon n. If that limit is L, now if L is less than one, the series is convergent. It's quite like the ratio test. If L greater than 1, the given series is divergent. If L equals to 1, the test is going to fail like the previous ones. Okay. So, let's quickly take a look at a problem. We have this as our infinite series. So, the very first thing you have to do is figure out your nth term. So, let's quickly deal with that. The numerators are natural numbers with some powers. So, the nth term is going to be n with the power of the power again is natural number. So that means it's going to be power n, n to the power n divided by, I can see my denominators are odd numbers starting from 3. So if odd number starts from 3, that means the nth term is 2n plus 1. If the odd number starts from 1, then it is 2n minus 1. So odd number starting from 3, that's a 2n plus 1. And the power is same as that of the numerator. So, I can take this or I can keep the whole to the power n completely numerator and denominator at the same time. So, this is how my nth term is looking like. Remember, I told you your nth term is going to be some function of n whole to the power n. Directly, you can understand it must be a Cauchy's root test problem. Okay. So, we have identified that over here. Now, we are going to use the Cauchy's root test. So, I'm going to find out limit n tending to infinity u n up to the power 1 upon n so my u n is n by 2 n plus 1 whole to the power n to the power 1 upon n so why we take this 1 upon n or how why did the identify it was a cauchy's root test because this whole powers they get cancelled Okay, this is how we understand that this must be a Cauchy's root test problem. The moment the powers get cancelled, we are left with a simple function and we can easily find the limit for it. Okay, so now we are left with limit n upon 2n plus 1. The degrees of numerator and denominator is 1. So, you just need to take n common. n is already common in the numerator. You could take n common from denominator. That's a 2 plus 1 upon n and getting cancelled so 1 by 2 plus 0 that's half less than 1 and if the limit value is less than 1 then our conclusion is that the given series is 
convergent right so this is how we are going to apply cauchy's rule the entire nth term has to be some function of n to the power n if it is in this format 100% will be sure that is a cauchy's rule test question okay so let's take a look at another question again you can see there is a whole power n doesn't matter it's positive negative whole power n so definitely a cauchy's rule test question okay so here your nth term you already know this entire thing is your nth term so it's given in that particular format so this is your nth term so let's do one thing let's write this term in a little bit more simplified manner okay so my un is i have a negative in the power so what i'll do i'll just write it as one upon the entire thing that i have which is n plus one by n to the power n plus one minus n plus one by n and a whole power n okay so i've removed the negative from the power and i've brought it to the denominator so now what i'm going to do is just find the limit as per the cauchy's root test so limit n tending to infinity u n to the power one upon n that's going to be one upon n plus one by n to the power n plus one minus n plus one by n whole to the power n and whole thing to the power one upon n right so the n in the powers they get cancelled what i can do is take uh, n plus one upon n common from denominator so i'm taking n plus one upon n common from denominator then this term will be left with n plus one upon n whole power n i've taken this term common so that means i'm left with a minus one okay so let's simplify this a bit uh, limit n tending to infinity okay now this is something you need to remember it's a simple limit that limit n plus one upon n whole to the power n what you can do is just divide by n that's a one plus one by n whole to the power n and it's a standard limit formula that this value is the irrational number e okay limit one plus one by n to the power n the value is e and this e has occurred right over here okay the limiting value is going to be nothing but e this portion if i divide by numerator denominator it's going to be one plus one upon n and the limit value of that is nothing but simply one so this part has a limit value one this part has a limit value e this part has a limit of, this part is simply constant which is minus one okay so i'll have one into e minus one okay so that means i have got okay no need to write the limit anymore because i have taken the limit i can simply write this value so I have a one by e minus one so e value we know it's uh, something like 2.7 and so on it's irrational so 2.7 minus one so e minus one that's going to be a 1.7 so one upon e minus one that's going to be a one upon 1 1.7 which is definitely less than one okay now you can find the exact value in your calculators so this value is less than one and by cauchy's root test again we can conclude that the given infinite series is convergent so that's it so that's all about cauchy's root test now finally we are left with its test okay now given any problem you can easily identify whether you want to use leibniz test or any other test because you will be using leibniz test only when you have an alternating series now what's an alternating series a series which looks like this is called alternating series the interesting part is the minus 1 to the power n minus 1 that means a plus minus sign is alternating if i write term by term the terms of this series if i write it term by term when n value 1 the power is 0 that means i simply have u1 when n is 2 i have in the power 2 minus 1 which is 1 so minus 1 to the power 1 that's minus u2 the next one is plus u3 minus u4 and so on so you can see the plus minus sign is alternating 
so that's called an alternating series the moment you have a plus minus sign alternating you have to understand that you must be using Leibniz test the moment you've understood that you have to use Leibniz test let's quickly walk you through the rules of Leibniz test the UN term the sequence of UN term that sequence is must be a sequence of positive terms that means each UN has to be positive which is just like the ones that we have done in all the tests up till now and more importantly the sequence UN has to be a monotonically decreasing sequence okay the sequence has to be monotonically decreasing and the limit value of that sequence must be zero that means n tending to infinity the nth term must tend to zero okay now what was the meaning of monotonically decreasing if you have forgotten i'll just remind you it means that un plus one minus un that is going to be negative right less than or equal zero which means that un is greater than or equals un plus one for all n belonging to natural numbers that means un is greater than its next term every term is greater than the next term okay that means the sequence is getting small the terms in the sequence are getting smaller and smaller as we proceed and it's tending towards the value zero so this is the requirement for leibniz test first of all it has to be alternating plus minus plus minus sign then the terms of the sequence has to be monotonically decreasing which means this has to be maintained okay this is how we check whether something is monotonically decreasing or not and its limit value has to be zero okay so once that happens we can say that the given series is convergent now if anything over here fails if any criteria fails that doesn't mean it is divergent remember this if anything fails we don't know what is going to happen okay that means leibniz test is going to fail the leibniz test cannot comment on the nature of that series if any of this criteria fails but if these criteria are getting satisfied then definitely we can say it is convergent okay so let's take a look at a problem see it's easy to identify the plus minus sign is alternating so you should understand it's a leibniz test question okay so let's quickly try to figure out our nth term so my nth term is not going to have any plus minus sign i am just concentrating on the term so the term is all the numerators are one the denominators are the first terms in the denominator they are all natural numbers one two three four five like this so that's going to be a n over here and the second term is just a plus one with its previous term so that means a n into n plus one so that's my nth term so that means this series is nothing but summation in 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power n minus 1 into u n which i have got over here okay so this minus 1 to the power n minus 1 it ensures that the plus minus sign is alternating okay so now let's check the criteria of leibniz test so this has to be a monotonically decreasing sequence that's number one criteria and more most importantly this uh, all the terms of this sequence are positive terms so no need to worry about that so let's find out the un plus one i'm going to replace the n with n plus one so i'll have n plus one into n plus two now remember for monotonically decreasing i want to check what happens to this subtraction okay so i'm just going to subtract n plus 1 un plus 1 from un and let's check what happens so 1 upon n plus 1 into n plus 2 minus 1 upon n into n plus 1 we can easily take a 1 upon n plus 1 common that leaves us with 1 upon n plus 2 minus 1 upon n i can just do a quick lcm over here that will give me n minus n mi minus 2 by n into n plus 2 the n's are going to get cancelled so i will simply have minus 2 upon 
n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 and definitely you can see this is 100% negative for whatever natural number n I take because the rest of the terms are definitely positive. So that means this is less than 0. So I can say that my un plus 1 minus un is less than 0 which means the sequence un is monotonically decreasing. So that means I can say that my first criteria has been fulfilled that un is monotonically decreasing and also each term of un is definitely positive okay so the first criteria has been satisfied now coming to the second criteria that means the limit of the sequence has to be zero okay so let's check out our second criteria so i'm going to find out limit un where un is something that i have already found out over here my un is 1 upon n into n plus 1 so i have 1 by n into n plus 1 now i have nothing in the numerator if n tending to infinity in the denominator definitely this value is nothing but zero so my first criteria is satisfied my second criteria is satisfied so i can say that therefore the given series is convergent by Leibniz test okay so that's very easy to understand whether a given problem is going to work with Leibniz test or not okay so now this is going to be the last question of this video so let's take a look again you can see it has plus minus sign alternating so that means it must be a Leibniz test question you have to figure out your nth term value you can see the numerators are all one the denominators are starting from 2 or you can say that it's actually starting from a 1 square that's not written okay so I have 1 square 2 square 3 square 4 square like this the terms are going on so that means it's going to be a n square very simple to understand so that means I am representing this as minus 1 to the power n minus 1 un where my un is given by something like this so the first thing I need to check whether this is monotonically decreasing or not obviously it's positive no doubt about that so i'm going to figure out what is my un plus one that's a one by n plus one whole square we can easily say it's monotonically decreasing but still i'll do the simple calculation here just for a better understanding i'm taking a subtraction one upon n plus one whole square minus one upon n square i'll do a quick lcm already i can say that this is negative i can directly say it here but still for convenience i am doing an lcm so minus n square minus 2n minus 1 by n square into n plus 1 whole square the n squares are getting cancelled so minus 2n plus 1 upon n square into n plus 1 whole square so we can see everything is positive just that there is a minus sign so that means this is definitely less than 0 so I have got un plus 1 minus un less than 0 which means un is monotonically decreasing so I have got my first result over here that sequence un is monotonically decreasing and every term of un is definitely positive that's the first criteria number two I need to find out the limiting value of un so my un was 1 upon n square that's definitely zero so my first criteria satisfied second criteria satisfied so from here i can comment that the given series is definitely convergent using leibniz test so that's it about leibniz test so in this video i've solved several problems of infinite series and i hope this video is helpful to you now i'll quickly walk you through the process of the free test that i have added for all of you just take a look at the things that you need to do. If you face any problem, do let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. To start the exam, click on the link that you have in the video description. It will take you to this web page where you need to enter your mobile number. Make sure you enter such a number where you can receive an OTP.
so once you receive the OTP just enter it and verify your OTP then it gives you all the general instructions that you need to go through and click on next so you will see the exam uh, will be shown over here where you have to read all the instructions agree with the uh, things that you have read the instructions and start the test so your test will start and you will have an automatic timer once you have completed the test i'll just click on save next save next save next and I'll submit the test now you'll see that it will show you you have answered zero questions you have total four questions and you've not answered anything because i've not selected any option and i'll submit the test so it will automatically generate my scorecard where it will show me the score that i have got so i've got zero basically because i've not attempted any question now you will be able to see the total number of questions the number of correct answers and the number of incorrect answers that you have given and the unattended questions now if you want to check out the complete solution if you have gone wrong somewhere then just go down and you'll get the download app option so just click on that it will take you to google play where you just need to install the application and it'll just take a couple of seconds and once that's done and use the same phone number that you have used before to log in will again send you another OTP which you need to enter so once you verify your OTP the application opens click on the horizontal bars on the left side and you will get the free test click on that the attempted one and then over there you'll see you've attempted the double integration quiz so just click on that and if you go down you'll be able to see view report and so you can view the report and now if you go down below you'll see the view solutions so you can just click on that and you'll get all the detailed solutions